Hey guys, and welcome back to a, another video. Today I have a react to talking about what we don't have, which is a video based off progression uh, from Odd Job Entertainment. I've done a few react videos to Odd Job Entertainment uh, in the past, and uh, I really like his takes. Yeah, I definitely uh, appreciate um, that he's a gamer, and I could tell so because I'm staring at the. Uh, behind of a Spartan in Halo 3. So I'm very curious where he's going with this. I love that he's referencing these other games. But um, yeah, just a great content creator. Yeah, I'll put the video in the description. Uh, you guys I'm sure are familiar with, and if not, you should, because uh, I think he is a godsend to the Star Citizen content creator uh, community, I guess. So yeah, just really looking forward to his take on this because progression, guys, is the most important subject uh, for me in Star Citizen, yeah, it's like that in performance because when you have a game that sells you spaceships and everything else in between, then the problem is, is it can also just be described as a scam. So Star Citizen and the CIG uh, have a burden to prove ev to everyone that their game is legitimate and not just a pay to win cash grab. Um, so we need to see what this game is going to look like when it comes to those aspects. And, uh, I just think it's such an important subject doesn't get covered enough. So big props to odd job for kind of, I guess, steering away from the baseline, which is following whatever marketing at CIG is this week, uh, and actually digging into a, a subject as important as this. Yeah. Which is why I desperately wanted to cover it. It's his video is marinated for seven days now, uh, so I think it's a pretty good time to throw a react to it and uh, see what his take is. Yeah, so let's dig in. I'm excited for this one, and I have been excited for this one all week. Extreme. Oh, sorry. We'll start from the start. Halo Three Recon. If you're anything like me, you hear that phrase and you start thinking about the good old days. Oh, the Halo. Music. the recon set was the ultimate. So he's got the katana on the back. I remember that. I think the suit that I wanted in Halo, though I didn't get it because I was busy with school, was the actual samurai outfit. So it wasn't this set, it was a samurai set. But I remember the katana on the back, uh, which he's gotten from another set. Man, Mr. Halo games, the older Halo games, uh, used to love, love the Halo universe. So good pick. Power move in Halo 3. It represents the culmination of a series of challenges that showed extreme dedication. To get this set, you had to complete Vidmaster. This included <laughs> reaching rank of lieutenant, completing a mission on legendary with everyone in ghosts, uh -oh. logging in on a specific day and playing rank with seven XP, finding all the mythic map skulls, passing the fourth set in firefight on heroic difficulty, completing coastal highway without warthogs or scorpions, and finally finishing any level on legendary we just got to be cautious about this, right? Because these are like theme park objectives for a theme park MMO. Like Star Citizen doesn't come with tiers of difficulty. Um, like chasing rare items around the universe. That's fair enough. That's cool. Um, but some of the objectives when it comes to acquiring progression in a game like this or, you know, an exclusive set, uh, you know, these are very arcadey kind of theme park-esque objectives and tasks to complete so just gonna be cautious there right so an open world sandbox um and stuff like that out shooting or throwing a grenade for doing all this you got the recon set the ultimate bragging rights for any halo 3 player games today have strayed from this in favor of quick money grabs in the form of paid i love how the music immediately turns somber cosmetics that undercut but here it's star citizen wah, wah. in the game star citizen unfortunately is no better while their monetization scheme is understandable, it does leave us wondering what does long-term progression look like in a game that so far has been willing to sell you everything. everything. And here's, here's the problem, right? Is like to agree with Oddjob. Why, why don't we see this at 12 years? And guys, please don't give me the alpha argument, okay? Like if we have bathrooms inside of our ships and fire extinguisher mechanics, I think we should have a rough idea of what progression is going to look like in Star Citizen. And we've had it vaguely described to us, uh, which I think is, which what they have announced, I think is good, but it needs to start getting into our hands sooner than later. 
uh and by sooner than later i mean 324 like it that now basically because you don't just drop in progression in an economy and you know actually earning power accumulating power and equipment on day one it doesn't need to be day one it should be now because that's what the game is that is the entire life cycle of a game is what does progressing through the game look like it's the most important question when it comes to an mmo because you're talking about the longevity of the game so it's like again for me one of the most important questions uh and they are yet to you know even give us a slither of it yeah it's it's just it's ridiculous uh and we need to get to this sooner than later absolutely things for sale my friend everything if i had a sister i'd sell her in a second that leaves progression in a rough spot or i should say it's always been there the only true progression we currently have is auec for earning more credits oh tell me you're going what where do you I think get you with are. credits more ships and what do those ships enable you to do? Earn more credits. <laughs> Yo, based, based, based. Odd job is quickly climbing the ranks of my favorite content creators on Star Citizen. Yeah, man. Yup. Yup. And Star Citizen has a burden of proof, right? Like you, they have to prove to the community, to the gaming community and anyone interested in their game that it isn't just a cash grab. And for that, you need to be able to accumulate and play the game without just USD being the end goal, right? And that hasn't been proven at all yet. And this is why I preach like on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, you guys know my stuff by now, you know my takes. I am, it's mostly on Twitter. There's nothing you can't buy with USD and we need a economy. The biggest thing I would change to this game you start force feeding vegetables and losing ship components on death, which I want to make a video about one day. Um, but two is like a ship that is purchased, you know, UEC or USD comes at a stock value, right? But a ship's potential can triple or quadruple with good components, which then makes the game not just some pay to win thing right like it's about what weapons you have it's about the quality of the components and stuff like this because right now components are just 100k inconvenience uh one time purchase for a spaceship and then that's it there's no other consequence or potential there at all when it comes to the current state of progression so again like you know the the way to validify and make this game um you know not some pay to win thing is to reward people for playing the game and you reward people for playing the game by one-upping the ships purchased by usd yeah and that's what you do you do exactly that so you know i'm glad he's capturing this uh or sorry speaking about this it is such an important subject so once you have that last ship that you wanted Yep. The game is basically over, unless you constantly like come up with ways to keep yourself entertained. Now you can do that, but in a game that's trying to capture the imagination oh, of many of gamers, speaking my love and with language, so much other fierce competition out there, that's a really bad strategy for a developer. Yep. Part of this is certainly due to the fluid nature of Star Citizen's development, and you can definitely make the argument of, guys, this is like, like I'm in heaven right now. This is, this is so good to hear, man. Like, I'm on the same wavelength. I'm gonna have to do, get this guy in the podcast for sure. Like, this is so good. Well, why invest dev time in a game where wipes are at least still a possibility, albeit less and less frequent as time has gone on? But that argument also has the downside of constantly pushing out the goalposts of yes. when we expect Star Citizen to behave like a game. With a focus on producing 4.0. Yeah, it's so true. Because, like, the problem is, and, like, people often criticize my takes when it comes to the economy and progression as the game's not ready for that. But no, like, we need, by the time the game releases, we need to have a deep understanding and have very refined progression and in-game economies. Yeah? Like, it doesn't just, you don't just turn the switch on or flip the switch when it goes live. Okay, now progression, now economy, guys. If anything, we should look at what the early stages, the middle stages, the later stages of progression and the economy look like. What does upkeep, maintenance costs, and money sinks look like in comparison to earnings? 
getting that kind of balancing in right now is so important. It's so important to the game. It's one of the most important aspects of the game. So yeah, man. No, the goalposts can't keep moving. They need to be here. They need to be now so that they can be tested, balanced, and people understand what the game is. And for it to actually become a game instead of like a sandbox where you can fly your NFTs around, man. And I don't want to be like come across super doomium or anything, but like, man, we need this now. Like, I really strongly believe that. And a true 1.0 experience. Need a reason. The a reason to play this is critical. With fewer tech hurdles to overcome, the focus has been and needs to continue shifting to fleshing out the content and gameplay aspect of this otherwise great tech demo. Progression is how you do that. What is progression? Yo. For the purpose of this video, we'll define this as giving players short, <clears throat> medium, and long-term goals. Your players need oh, to feel like so they have good. a sense of direction and something to work towards. Earning enough credits to get X item or ship is fine for a short-term goal, but the time invested and the payoff is also short-lived. As wipes yep. become less and less common, it becomes increasingly apparent that we need much more than this. The reputation is CIG's first stab at making medium and long-term goals. The current problem is, as you advance your reputation in any career path, you only gain access to higher AUEC earning potential. The higher paying mercenary missions might be more fun and challenging, but there's a growing emptiness as the AUEC earned has a lesser impact to your overall experience. With a few simple tweaks though, reputation could be extremely valuable. Suppose you're doing go. mercenary missions around Hurston. By the nature of the totalitarian corporation and policies controlling the area, this is pretty hard to start off with as Hurston does not allow weapon sales to civilians. So any tools of the trade you're using have to come from elsewhere and only certain weapons are allowed to be carried through customs. Ergo, you might be starting off with just a sidearm. As you progress your reputation with the local security forces, you gain access to a full carry permit which now allows you to carry any weapon class without being stopped or impeded at security checkpoint. Of course, you're still gaining access to higher difficulty missions with better payouts. To further aid you in this, progressing further might then give you access to Hurston Security's armorers. Going to any of the local businesses, you can now purchase Hurston Security armor sets through officially sanctioned dealers. Yeah, so what he's describing is exactly how Tarkov works. So, yeah, really glad that like he's talking about this type of progression rather than you know here's the ultra rare set you get like in halo for the recon set by you know doing these random tasks that have no association with each other so yeah i love this tying it into a reputation system allowing the purchase of like exclusive elite gear because you've grinded up that reputation makes perfect sense that's exactly how it is in Tarkov. It's also very much compatible with Star Citizen's direction of wear and tear armor, right? Like, and weapons. You're not going to get married and hold on to the same armor set, uh, you know, for your entire account's lifetime. Uh, it's going to be changing hands. It's going to, you know, have wear and tear. You're going to have to replace it, uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, absolutely love this. Maxing out your reputation gives you access to the coveted Red Eye Artemax set. By initially placing limitations on players, you give them an added challenge. Then, by sprinkling rewards into the reputation system, players have discrete methods to measure their progression. I, I don't think it. I don't think it. Like, I don't think it should be sprinkled. I think it should be a gigantic amount of job. Like, I would say, like, almost eighty percent of gear, weapon attachments, weapons, armor sets should be gated behind some sort of reputation yeah like a good example is in tarkov you get all the usd web sorry the us weapons uh and armor sets from the peacekeeper uh reputation right and then you can get the russian weapons from the russian traders stuff like this so like those reputations so you could do the same thing in star citizen like pirate um you know kind of outlaw equipment uh can be is gated behind outlaw reputations and then bounty hunter gear like handcuffs stun guns distortion weapons that are exceptionally powerful could be gated behind bounty hunter reputation stuff like this like i think 
majority of the game should be gated behind these reputations when it comes to the equipment and maybe how deep you are into that reputation unlocks tiers of how good that equipment is but um i wouldn't even say sprinkle because then we're not we don't have as much progression as we would have hoped so right like if anything i think it should be a huge huge amount of the game because i don't think people are just gonna want to grind all the way to master bounty hunter like reputation level 10 and then the reward be like you know a, a anvil hawk skin like if anything give us like real meat like real upgrades equipment stuff like this i think it should be tons tons and tons of equipment started off with no access to my full arsenal now i have it i couldn't legally wear first and security colors and armors now i have access to a light armor set then the medium the heavy and then that artemex set you might be wondering though if someone advances their rep in an area what's to prevent someone else just buying armor from them and skipping all that grind for themselves well there's a number of ways to mitigate this Arguably, the true value of the Hurston Security Armors is in the skins applied to them. You can separate these two elements such that having access to the shader is player-specific and can't be sold. This could also apply to all subscriber gear and unique skins across the board. You can also have local factions be hostile to players wearing colors they haven't earned, something akin to Stolen Valor in the real world. I'm partial to separating it out as a skin that can be applied to armor, as that seems to mitigate some of the issues we face currently with paid gear, while also future-proofing it somewhat in the sense that you can buy armor elsewhere, apply your favorite skin, and not have to travel across multiple systems to get the color you want. It also more strictly enforces the idea that seeing a player wearing Hurston security armors means that player did something to earn them. Yeah, but then also like looting the armor is going to be less quality than like, for example, purchasing it brand new and crafting it, right? Like if you go buy armor of a trader, like a Hurston trader, because you're max reputation, you're getting that armor in pristine condition. You loot it off a guard, well, it's got bullet holes and the plates are shattered uh, and it needs to be repaired and you're only repairing it to a certain quality because it's been damaged prior. So... Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, you can you can do it other ways. Like, wear and tears are going to be play a big aspect in the game in the future. So, you know, and not to even include, like, our armor set's going to have stat bonuses. Like, you know, less weight or, um, you know, maybe modifiers to recoil management. Stuff like that. We don't know if the game's gone that direction, but there's opportunity there too. It's a way to show off and flaunt your achievements. Multiply this out to the other security factions in the game today, the criminal factions that will exist tomorrow, and the numerous other entities to exist in the future, and you've got a lot of medium-term goals for players to work for. But wait, there's more. Right now, the reputation is localized, such that you working for Hurston Security only earns your reputation for Hurston security and does nothing to advance Crusader security or anything else. There is not currently a Stanton security freelancer that encapsulates the entire system. But what if there was? What if maxing out the reputation in any smaller area granted you a perk with this larger system security contractor? You might structure it such that earning max rep with the Blackjacks of Art Corp is easier to entice players to do that one first. Then when they complete it, they earn a discount on ship components in the system, or maybe they earn a rookie skin that can be applied to their ships. Checking off the next planet earns them an additional perk and skin, as well as a mounting reward for now having completed two planets. And, and this is my only issue with this is like, this is sprinkles, right? Like armory access, local mission tiers, some skins. Like if anything, like, I think getting Hurston security reputation should unlock, you know, you shouldn't even be able to buy dominance weapons or attrition weapons from Hurston Dynamics unless you have maxed out reputation with Hurston. And then those guns are actually powerful now and considerably better than normal laser repeaters and laser shotguns, for example. Like, the armor sets can't be purchased, um, you know, brand new with actual pristine condition 
The only sets you can get is looted, damaged sets that are repaired from NPCs out in the verse. Like, I, I, my only point is, I don't think it needs to just be skins and like a couple items. I think it should be a truckload of stuff. Like, gatekeep a lot of this stuff to encourage people to play and grind the game. Because that's what we want to do, right? Is we want to grind and play the game. Um, reward people for that significantly. Make this game about progression rather than, you know, just buying USD ships and then going out and earning skins in the verse. Like, it's not enough. You know what I mean? Like, there's not enough of the game there and too much of the store. So I guess what I want is the store to shrink. The store's impact on the MMO to shrink. And for the actual game reputations and playing it to increase. Uh, and so on for the third planet. Completing the entire system has to give you something real nice. It could be an exclusive skin for your armor, a special weapon variant, the possibilities are endless. An idea I'm partial to is making it such that this is the only way to gain access to a specific brand of FPS weapons. We've seen the recent showcase of the Vault weapons soon to come out. What if maxing out system rep was the only way to get access to the Vault arsenal? That would make these weapons a highly sought after treasure. Again, to prevent these top level players from flooding the market with Vault guns, there's a number of methods you can employ. Specific to weapons, you can have the batteries be an exclusive item sold only to permitted users and be considered contraband at security stations due to their volatile nature and ease for abuse. With durability elements being introduced for all items in the game, you can yep. also have arms dealers only repair Volt weaponry when received from authorized agent. The thing is too is like, you don't just have to gatekeep everything to having to have that reputation like oh you don't have that reputation literally your character can't equip the item i don't think star citizen will go down that route considering how important immersion is to them but you could just make these vault weapons expensive to buy and if someone sells them on the gray market then sure guess what that's a that's a career path is reselling what you've done with reputation but then you just gatekeep the amount they can buy with it, right? Like if you want to get max Hurston reputation, yeah, you could be selling and giving away that armor set, but you can only buy a set every two days, you know? And then that then sets a amount it would be worth on the market, right? Um, and stuff like that. But I don't think we have to be as concerned of players trading it and stuff. If anything, embrace it. And if none of those ideas float your boat so far, there's still a lot of other options. Another one could be earning a ship outright that comes cool decked with the Stanton game. Enforcer skin. Or maybe this is how you earn the right to buy property in corresponding monitored systems. It then goes without saying that if you have a reputation but being definitely earned room at the for layers. planetary level that sure. advances progression at the system level, then at some future point with multiple systems in the game, there's obviously guys look look how many systems there are and where we've been we, we've been waiting five years for one more and look how many they're supposed to deliver just side distraction but still room for earning <laughs> things at an even higher region level as well perhaps the upper echelon of players is someone roaming around in their fighter that has the ultra exclusive skin for having completed the entire universe i think that's just like if what i've got from this so far is I think he wants to dip his toes into progression with reputation. And my only cri criticism of his take so far is, mate, I want to dive in the deep end. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, nope. <laughs> like, let's not just dip our toes in. Let's just go all the way. Yeah. Like as deep as we can in this, let's validate the game. Let's get away from the store. Let's get away from spinning USD and really look at accumulating power and an economy and items and rarity absolutely like an exclusiveness right like, like let's not just um you know reward a usd spending let's uh you know make it almost insignificant in comparison to players that are playing the game deep that are putting in the work reward people for playing and grinding your game at that point, they've officially just beat Not the just game. skins. At least until the next expansion introduces something that even they don't have. 
This also introduces a natural ebb and flow of traffic as players move system to system trying to earn new stuff. For instance, it pulls players into Pyro where they may face added challenges to get the Pyro collectibles under their belt. Admittedly, this has all been framed from a combat perspective which only represents a portion of the larger game. I just thought like, yeah, I just don't want it to be collectibles. Like, I wouldn't use the terminology collectibles. I would just use it as like gear. Like you want to play as a pirate with, you know, like some evil looking pirate, then you go grind the the pyro reputations and the piracy reputations so that the gear you're purchasing is of that description. You're not just going there to unlock the skin. And that's it. You tick that box. That's done. That task is done. You've got that skin on your account now. If anything, make that the, um, like what you're cycling through. That's what your day-to-day -day armor purchases look like, uh, rather than just yeah, like a neat reward for an achievement, so to speak. That's probably just because I myself it. largely play shooters, so that's how my reptile <clears throat> brain sees things. But I'm sure it's equally obvious that these still apply to industrial players as well. The unfortunate that way, side lawful being players that always look lawful, reputation and unlawful players always look introduced. unlawful, etc. If you them. look like if your organization lives in um, Stanton, then you guys are going to have your Stanton reputations up high, which means your characters are going to look like they're coming out of Stanton, not look like you're from pyro just because you completed a pyro achievement and you're buying all your stuff in stanton still you know like i think if anything just make these reputations the type of armor you cycle through you know it's like okay you're tired of looking like hurston well it's time to move away from hurston you know and start frequenting pyro for example or whatever other system like terra you know like you are the environment that you're playing in this and not the achievement you collected one of time progression possible in a massive game like star citizen these are also all medium term goals in spite of how long they may take to complete they're medium term goals because they do have some type of ending that marks the task complete a true long term goal is something that will always be there always be a way to spend your time and always offer a challenge base building is the most obvious example of this that we know of it stands to reason that you'll be working hard to pay for the property taxes and security fees in systems where that applies. In low security zones, you'd be constantly maintaining your own security which comes with its own cost. Keeping equipment functioning and farms productive also require user input and maintenance. And there's a number of arguments that long-term play feeds into proper org gameplay. But that deserves its own video. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you'd like to see that one in the future. To increase the longevity of the reputation system and add long-term elements to it, being that it doesn't end, we can consider the competing factions in the game. Suppose that initially, I find that the legal contractors offer the rewards I'm most interested in. This puts me at odds with the illegal factions, so I miss out on those rewards. Then, with a minor content refresh, let's say the headhunters start offering a skin for the railgun that I really, really want. Yeah, again. I then have to grind just reputation don't like with these headhunters small, to like, get it. Make it this massive. This then starts draining my reputation Tons with the legal of factions I've been Not working for previously. Skin. And when they offer something new, I have to do work for them again to nah. get it. No, because then I you're double dipping. You're not committed to left or right. Sorry, but it's just my take. Like, I wouldn't want players that... Uh, bounty hunting to also look like criminals at the same time because they just decided they wanted a criminal outfit you know like it's and maybe you know maybe i'm wrong in that like maybe what i'm asking for you know ties too many hands i guess or you know maybe maybe i'm wrong in that but i do want the reward of playing the game and grinding up reputations to be far more than just a skin that's for sure may sound like so like a much chore, more but this is that. just one of many ways that games build longevity with their systems you could easily make a like comparison getting a here skin between seasonal be vendors a fraction and too. of the equipment Yet another and rewards you goal get to for committing may to come a in the form of widespread maintenance of your belongings with wear and tear being implemented Repetition. your pristine ship won't stay that way forever and components will have to be swapped out from time to time 
CIG will also surely introduce new brands and types of components in the future, and it will be a constant challenge to dissect the meta for any particular ship. Another way to make this impactful, however, is to introduce specialized gear that offers maybe a 1% or 2% better performance over what you can buy in stores. If you lose these components and cannot replace them via claims due to their rarity, you can drive players to complete content to earn back those parts. For instance, if I want the fastest quantum drive that can still go across Stanton in my Gladius, I might have to do a raid and bring proof of it to a vendor. It could also be loot at the final chest you get to. You've got to be careful, though, because we're starting to go down that theme park route at where it's, is this a theme park MMO? Like, where we're thinking of, when our brain is thinking about, like, dungeons and raids and tasks to do? Or are we in that, like, living, breathing universe sim, right? Like, you got to be careful because it becomes very arcadey very quickly if you go down this route. This concept also ties in well with crafting in the future. If I've got the blueprint for that same quantum drive, maybe my challenge is finding the raw materials and components yep. to create it. If I then sold these to other players, I'd have my own mini loop of tracking down these parts en masse to keep the wheels of commerce turning. And player trade is another fairly simple means of giving players long-term goals. See, like this is the difference, right? It's like an EVE Online you don't have to do this, right? It's not about doing raids and dungeons and theme park aspects. It's a living, breathing MMO where people are crafting it. They're going out and earning it in the world and stuff like that. It's not, you're not brought out of the game's immersion to complete any of the tasks or getting any of the equipment you need, right? Like crafting, salvaging, looting, all of that is like legitimate things. Um, whereas what he's describing is like, oh, you have to go kill this boss and, the, and then he drops, you know, this item that can be used for it. Like it just gets arcadey and theme parky real quick. So, you know, you look at the way Eve does it. Eve doesn't pull you out of that, you know, that universe, the sandbox, um, to start thinking about what daily quests you need to do and stuff like that. I might specialize in hunting down particular components or crafting said component to then sell in a player commerce system. Crafting will be great. With what we've covered so far, it should <laughs> be that pretty about? clear that there is plenty of room for creativity for CIG to reward players and implement various kinds of progression both with what we know they plan to do and with what I'd like to see them do. I want to end here with a bit of a warning. Put simply, you cannot have progression in a game where that can simply be undercut with a credit card. Yeah. All value of everything I've yeah. described goes out. Like everything, like 90% of capturing an account's potential needs to be out of reach of the credit card. And that's the thing. Like we needed the credit cards to get the develop the studio developed, to get the employees to, you know, get all of this built. I'm very understanding of that. But that can't be anywhere close to the finishing line. Out Otherwise, the window, it's just not going to be a good game. Buy it. So you can never have the pride of wearing that Somebody red eye Artemis set it. if someone can just pay money and skip all the work you did to get it. Yeah. I think this even applies to subscriber items and paid gear. Yes. Having these items oh, enter I the it. pool does uh. devalue them for paying customers too. I think CIG really needs to start implementing two kinds of items. They can and should keep bolstering the roster of paid items as a way to make money. I'm totally fine with that. But these items need to be exclusive to paid customers, and likewise there needs to be distinct and separate items that can only be acquired in-game via progression, looting, crafting, etc. It, not even just like, a, like, again, not a small amount, a gigantic amount. Majority of Star Citizen... It's like equipment, rewards, progression needs to be completely out of reach of a card. Like if you're to use percentages, the store could capture 20%. You know, you're buying ships at stock. Um, you know, maybe some skins that could go with gear that you've bought, like different colors for Hurston armor. If you've got the Hurston reputation up and stuff, just different shader colors to the armor, stuff like this. Cosmetic appearance-based stuff like that. But, like, power, um, equipment, uh, and progression? Nah, it can't be that.
both types of items need to be on an even playing field of value and quality as well. Think about all the pre-order bonuses you may Lord have purchased that seem so game. cool, only to be overshadowed by the cosmetic store a month later where the developers clearly spent the yep. lion's share of time. Think about recent Call of Duty games. They have some Call operators that you can sounds. earn by playing the game. But then there's a massive in-game store where you can be Snoop Dogg and Nicki Minaj. <laughs> the game wholesale abandons any semblance of a serious military shooter in favor of easy cash. You know, people were complaining about this when those, um, those like bear helmets in the Halloween gear came into the game. They're like, this just kills the immersion and makes the game feel like Fortnite. So I can understand where he's going with this. People were complaining about this back in the day. Cash grabs from kids with too much credit card access. You don't end up seeing too many of the earnable skins because they're completely lacking compared to the VFX of a flaming skeleton. And to be clear, I am not advocating for these kinds of cosmetics in Star Citizen. I hate them in Call of Duty already, let's leave those kinds of over-the-top skins to the kiddos. But I am saying that if you earn something in-game, you should be just as likely to use that as you would something you paid for. <coughs> Items earned in-game so. can't be seen as lesser to their paid counterparts. I wouldn't even say they should be equal, they should be in more favor of the guy who played the game, not the guy who bought it. Might make short-term financial sense, especially in games like Call of Duty where it gets replaced each year. But for a game like Star Citizen that wants players to play forever, it's a great way to kneecap player interaction down the road. Coming full circle to Halo, the recon set was the crowning achievement of a Halo 3 player. It stood above the <coughs> EOD, Hayabusa, and everything else Hayabusa as the best the a player for. could get. Then That was the word I was looking for, the samurai outfit in Halo, Hayabusa. Okay. Halo Reach came out, and it was a pre-order bonus. Suddenly, the recon set that was so loved and fawned over became common and boring. By handing over a bit of cash early to Bungie, you guaranteed yourself recon. But then, you likely dropped it once you earned something else that not everyone was wearing at all the time. For all the possible systems we can implement in a game like Star Citizen, it won't mean much so long as that progression can be undercut by the pledge store. So while selling cosmetics is totally fine in my mind, and there's numerous other things that predictably can and will be sold to players, there is a path forward where the pledge store doesn't taint the game and players can feel validated by their efforts. But it's going to require a lot of content in the game and there needs to be exclusivity. If anything, it should be like like this gear. I guess it doesn't matter because it changes hands. Like even if you buy this gear, someone can kill you and loot it. So it's like you're not too entitled by purchasing it. But you could just sell the shaders. Like you have to get the gear in game from the reputation or whatever, whatever grind it's required, but it's the shader color that you could buy that would change it. Like it, you know, you could, doesn't have to be the items itself. Between these two primary sources of gear. Odd job from the editing bay here. I love this latest episode of Inside Star Citizen. I think it showed a lot of what I'd like to see in the game going forward. And they talked a lot about contested zones, and I think that there's a great deal of potential there. If they introduce new rewards. If all you get at yep. the end of that chest is more subscriber gear, it's going to be a pretty big slap in the face to all the players in the game. I'm all Yeah, but here's where I hope you're not just talking about one item. Like, nah, man, like make it a bunch of items come from this. A bunch of upgrades, a bunch of progression, not just you get a skin which I'm hoping is not where he's going to go with this. You don't get a skin for doing a contested I'm already zone. tired of getting subscriber gear in normal missions. I think it's a very lazy way to create content, and it's not very rewarding at the end of the day. If I do a challenging mission, I want to get something for doing that mission that I can only get by doing that mission. That level of exclusivity is what makes it a way to flaunt and show off later. If I'm showing off the same gear that my friend just bought in the store, there's really no sense of pride or accomplishment there. Yeah, but the problem is though, right, is there's no pride or sense of accomplishment if everyone's completed the task as well, 
right? So that's why I like the reward being something that you can pick up. Like, say the guards that are at this station of the contested zone always have this armor set, right? You don't tick it off and then you're done forever. Otherwise, you've got 10,000 players who have ticked it off and done it forever and have all the armor. But if you go there, you get it, you could loot it when you're there, and then you go back and you could lose it again, then running into a, someone wearing that gear is now rare, right? But it's not if they've just ticked it off a checklist. So, like, keep that in mind too, right? Like, you want the this content to be recyclable and repeatable. Uh, and I just am a little bit cautious that he's describing this as, like, a mission to be completed and then you've unlocked that. You know, it's like, nah, like you want this thing to keep reoccurring, people to keep going there. So, you know, make, for example, um, at one of the stations, they love to have the crossbow uh, and this certain armor set so that if someone sees you out in the verse and you've got that crossbow and you've got this armor set, examples, guys, only examples, but they've got their crossbow or they've got those armor set, you know, oh, they went, go, they went and killed a guard over there. Hey, I want to go kill a guard over there and get that armor set too. And then you've got players running into each other with it. Yeah, but it's not just about, oh, that guy went and did a mission there. So that's why he's got it. If I go do the mission, I've done it and then I'm done with it. You don't want them to be, you don't want players to be done with the content. You want them to keep going back there. Good example is Ghost Hollow. Yeah, like my concern with the contested zones is this sounds a whole lot like Ghost Hollow, which is a whole lot of a ghost town. No one goes there because the incentive and reward is not worth it anymore. Problem is, is if it's a tick off checklist reward, like you've got the achievement, that's it. Now you've unlocked that set. Like for example, the recon armor in Halo 3, you're not going back there for more. And I think we're at a point in the game's development where we can start expecting can, more you can have progression content like and this. And the content be a recyclable. Lot of the tech hurdles have been overcome and, and repeatable at the same to a time. Point where the team really can start focusing on gameplay and filling out that narrative experience. And because of that, I think that we should start to see a lot more variety in armor types and aesthetics and things that players can customize to feel special. And if we don't get that, that's a really good way to choke growth for the game in the future. We've got a great foundation in Star Citizen. It's a pond that's a mile wide, but right now it's only an inch deep. Adding player progression and implementing these various kinds of player growth and experience is how you get it to feel like a full cohesive experience. To wrap up, we talked about a lot of different kinds of progression that could exist in Star Citizen. Many of them are in the works already or are coming down the pipeline. And I had a lot of fun thinking about ways to make the game feel more rewarding, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the ideas I've put forward. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, this is Odd Job Entertainment signing off. Oh yeah, like and subscribe to this guy. Yeah, I'll put it in the description. Awesome video, man. I would just argue um that i would want it to less be about sprinkles and more about the entirety right like dive in the deep end of this gatekeep make items exclusive to factions like um allow what a character or a player looks like not to be a representation of achievements he's unlocked or achievements he's completed rather than things that he's done in the moment right like so for example if you're wearing the heavy darth vader looking armor it's because you went to the the big bad villain bunker and just killed an npc there or whatever you know like i'm just i'm a bit skeptical of it becoming an achievement based mmo rather than a living breathing sandbox sim right like and that's just my concern i think like shaders is one thing but armor sets is another um and stuff like that because that's the problem right is at that point we're just all chasing achievements and i've played that mmo um and you know it's not that thrilling uh so i guess that's my my point i'd like to see the game i uh, reward players for playing it far heavier uh, far more so than players that just purchased it, but you can purchase things for sure. Uh, if we can limit it in the future further towards aesthetics rather than 
um, power and equipment. That'd be nice. But, yo, it's so important we talk about this. Um, and such a good video, yeah. I agree very much heavily with this. Uh, and so awesome that he covered this, man, because not a lot of people do. So you've uh, you've definitely earned my thumbs up. Awesome, man. We've got to get him on a pod. We've got to get Odd Job on a pod, I think. Talk about this. Maybe I could bring that up. Maybe I'll talk to him about, you know, like, is he chasing an achievement, you know, task completing MMO or, you know, an MMO where arm is changing hands and you can't keep the same set going for a long time. You have to repurchase it or recraft it, stuff like that. Right. Um, curious, but awesome, man. Such a good video. So based. Well done. Yeah, guys. What do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, specifically when it came to like me with the skins and achievements, not wanting that in comparison to actually grinding out and killing something for the armor you're wearing, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Right. Um, I guess it's really like, it's really hard to describe it, but let me know what you guys think. Yeah. Good stuff guys. One, two, three. If you got this far, I'll see you in the next video. Odd job. You're doing awesome, dude. Keep up.